Will this old motor power the grinder that I've been working on for the last couple of days? Well, I hope you follow to the end of this video because I'm going to reassemble this, get it all hooked up, and we're going to see if I can sharpen tools with this old motor, this old grinder that I've been working on. This is the second part of a two-part video series that I've been working on. So follow to the end and see how this old tool actually works. I believe you'll be surprised. Join me as I share stories of my life as a kid, bringing junk home and turning it into something useful. Fact is, I'm still doing this today at age 69. The first thing I'm going to do is pressure wash this bench right here. I have my pressure washer set up, ready to go. And all I need to do is turn it on and, and get this cleaned up. So it has a chance to dry till we get ready to go with it. So let me get set up here and we'll get this done. And I think I'll change the tips. I want a little. Let's go with uh, let's go with the 15 degree. Oh yeah, that's working a lot better. See, it's bringing the wood right back out. Get all that years of grease and grime off of there. This won't take very long, so bear with me here just a couple of minutes more. As I get this done, I want to bring you in here and, take, and just let you have a good close look at this. I'm really impressed. I'm going to set it up on its end now and hit the underneath side. No, oh, boy, that's got a lot of power. to do a lot of barn restoration and we'd have to pressure wash the timbers off like this and then treat it with a um, pesticide to make sure the bugs weren't in it and then seal it and buildings turned out nice we'd have had uh, the means to record back when we was doing it like you have today, it has saved and preserved a lot of valuable information for future generations to enjoy, if, if they would. Yep, this is actually turning out a lot better than I thought it would. Okay, we're going to call that good on that. Let me shut this down. And I'll bring you in here so you can really see what we got. It turned out pretty decent. Now we'll set it out here in the sun and let it dry. And by the time we get that stuff over there ready to go, this will be ready to go. Well, we have it sitting out there drying. The bench is started. Now our next step is, I just want to gather up, make sure I have everything ready to go with the um, rest of the stuff that needs to be bolted on that. We'll need some bolts, 
And I think I know what I'm going to use for that. We'll have to get everything lined up. I may need to drill some old, uh, new holes with that motor. And I have to get that stand mounted on there, but I can't do any of that until that dries. So we'll bring it back when we get ready to do the assembly. I'm going to get started now on this uh, bench and I want to show it to you. So I'm going to bring this down so you can see it. And right there's the bench. And what I'm going to do is just sand the top of this bench a little bit so you can see it. A little. Or so it's just a little bit better looking. So watch as I sand this bench. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just wanting to clean it up some. I'm not sure if I'm going to put a finish on it yet or not. I thought about it. But you can see some of the wood power is coming right back. But I don't want to lose all the patina of the old. But I do want to clean it up a little. I'm liking what I see here. actually working really well. Okay, that's all I want to do. It's just that little bit. Now we're going to move this up on my work table. We have you here and I can still see where it was set on here before. So we're going to set it up somewhat in the same place that it was before. Uh, moving it just a little. I might have to rework this right here. Let's get the electric motor up there. And get it somewhat in place. I'm not sure which one I need to fasten first. But this was right there. Originally it was up just a little bit, but I think I moved it a little to get, uh, get some stretch on the belt. So, and since this belt is a little shorter, maybe we can move the whole thing back just a little bit. But this is giving you an idea of what this is going to look like. Now I like that. As long as I can get it to line up, I think this will be really good. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this motor. That's too long and it's too short there. I need to put a pin in here to hold it in place. I really don't have anything here in the shop to do that with. I have this little bolt here. It's not the right size and it actually will not go in because of the uh, housing of the motor. So that isn't going to work. I have to find something, but I got my square here, and what I'm going to use that for is to lay an angle out so I could get it somewhat in line. So if I do this, that's going to work pretty good, except I need to get that in where those holes are. So. Let me keep looking over here. I'm going to have to come up with something because I can't just blindly go with it. Um, 
wonder if this would work for a temporary setup. I bet it would for one of them anyway. It's an all thread and it's long enough. It's long enough to come up through the bottom. If I can find a hole. There it is. Oh. There we go. I thought, boy, that motor's got a little weight to it. I, I'm telling you. There we got it. Now we got it started anyway. And then if I put this right here, I can thread that right up in there. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. No, we're not. Why not? I don't know. Just not. Are we going yet? There, I think we are making some headway. Must have been some something on that. Well, I like the way that's looking. Okay, now let's Put something up through this other hole just to get it lined up. There we go. That's perfect. That's perfect. So we got that. Now what I need to do is bring the center of that pulley Which I'll tell you what, that is really close. I think I can make that work actually. So right there, let me go get a square and I'll just see. But I think, I think that's gonna work. You'll see what I'm doing here in just a minute, but I'm trying to establish this down there, but I want to be, you know, that is almost perfect. So if I use this square and I make a mark here, I can make one here too. Okay. Now those marks, that one didn't, that one did not transfer over. So let me do that again right here. There we go. Okay, what we need to be is right in the center of this with the pulley right here. And I know this is two inches. Let me mark that right there. Huh. That should be, and that should be. Nope. Right there it is. Okay. That's pretty darn close. Let's put a dot right there. Let's put a dot right here. We're going to say that that's the center. Right there. Right there's the center. So what I do is I line this up. Look at that. <laughs> this, those two lines align perfectly with my black line. So you know what that means. That means that that would put that pulley center on the shaft, where, you know, I need to place it obviously because the shaft moves and yeah, so that pulley can be set in the center of that shaft, which should be right there. And with this setting there and there, and then on here, I can pull this 
like that to give that. Yeah, that doesn't look quite right, but well, I'll tell you what, it's not too far off. Actually, that looks pretty darn close. Maybe not. Yep, if I pull that back then where it needs to go, I think I could set this right here, maybe a little tighter, maybe right there. So let's mark it right there and right there. I did this once before, I'm sure, because I believe when I did this before, the belt was all stretched out and I wanted to use it, so I had to move that motor back, and that's why there's two sets of holes. Does that make sense? It does to me. And I think this will work. So we're going to mount this right here. It'll be okay. Let me see if I can find something to at least temporarily mount it. Ideally would be to drill a hole and put bolts through it. wonder if that's what I should do. The bolts like this would be perfect. That's even the right size. I would just have to get the right length. So what I need to do is mark this like that and like this and then see if I can get a dot down in there and I can so now let's pull that off so I have this right here this right here and this right here so all I have to do is get a drill drill holes right there theoretically Theoretically, that should be where that would go then. But I definitely need to get me some hardware because I want it to be right. And I wonder if I could set this under here like that. Yep, I can. And I'll get a tape measure. Get a smaller one, easier to handle. It's not that big a project that we need a real long tape measure. There's another way I could do it also if I want it to, which I may. I think I will. I'll just mark the square right there. Then I'll measure that. Measures that measures two and a quarter inches. So two and a quarter, and this measures so with washers, with washers and nuts, we're going to be three inches. So I need three inch long. Let me just write that on here. Three inch. And I think this is a quarter. It is. Quarter. Need three of them. That will be covered up. So just making notes so I don't have to redo this again. I'm going to have to get the... Get the... Oh, I know how I can. I, I need to get the hardware is what I'm trying to say. I'm just getting sidetracked in my thoughts here. I just figured out how to figure out the length of this. So that's where it was underneath. So if I put that like that and it was flush up here, that means even. 
And now if I measure that, that gives me a really good idea <laughs> at three inches as well. So I could go, since I want a big washer in the bottom, actually that would be three and a quarter. So if I were three and a half inches, if I go four, it's gonna stick up too high and possibly hit on the motor. So what I need to do, yeah, I think three, three and a half inches is gonna be plenty. We'll go three and a half inches on this one. All three and a half inches here. So three and a half. And these are, what size are you? I think it's this right here, but yeah, see that fits. I mean, you couldn't get that any tighter. You could, but it would be too tight. <coughs> so, and this bolt is well three eighth inch all all day long. And let me write that down. Okay, three and a half by three eighths. We got that. I need four of them and three here. So the next step that I want to do is go ahead and get the cord hooked up to this motor. And what I did is went and got some cord. This came off of an old saw that was burned up. I tried to fix it. Guess what? I couldn't. So I got, I, I saved the cord off of it to use. It's a nice flexible cord, would make a perfect setup for this. And, yep, all I gotta do is figure out if there's a difference between which wire. I'm gonna put the block here on the short one. <coughs> I think that would work. Let me get my cutters. Yeah, that's going to work. We'll go ahead and strip this. All I'm doing is stripping the wire. Then I'm going to twist it. Same as I twisted this one, I'm going to trim that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring you closer. You don't need to see me. You need to see what I'm doing. So, Right here's the wires. I just trimmed this one and I trimmed this one. So what I want to do is go ahead and get these two meshed together and I'll show you what I'm going to use for that. I came across these right here and the whole idea of these is you can put the wires on each side and put some heat to it and it melts it together. So this size wire here, this one would work perfect. It's a little bigger than the ones I've been using. So, but before I do that, tell you what, I've got room to slide my shrink wrap down from the end of the cord. So we're not even gonna worry about that yet. What we are gonna worry about is getting this the idea is to get two, both pieces of wire through there. I don't know if that's, if you can see that, but both of those wires are right there where that little piece of solder is. Now if that doesn't fall, all I need to do is, all I need is my, uh, a little bit of heat on that. And 
What I'm using is an overkill, but it sure sure works good. As I'm just going to put a little heat on it. It's a little too much. Oops, I'm burning the wood. I don't want that either. It's starting to melt. See that? Let's get that shrunk up around there, smelting a little bit. I'm gonna, gonna call that good. And we'll let that cool off just for a minute. And then we'll do the same thing with this right here. Except I'm gonna cut this back just a little bit. I think if I cut that off right there and then grab a hold of that wire right there, it's going to be perfect. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but like I said earlier, I've got some shrink wrap on these old wires to keep the frayed from breaking loose. Okay, we want to strip back there. I think we want to cut off about right there. And the thing is, when you're doing something like this, if if you if you uh, make it too short, for crying out loud, there's plenty of cord here. Just start over. You're not out a whole lot, a little, but not a lot. Let's see if that helped. That feels pretty good. Feel, yep, that feels real good. It's still a bit warm though. Okay, we're going to strip this wire back to about right there. Pull that off and we're going to turn it. And then we're going to grab another one of these. We're going to put it on there, and then we're going to go in like that. And you know what? That is pretty darn close. I see a little bit. Let me push this in just a little further. There we go. Perfect. Let's see if I can heat that up. It's almost there. Don't overdo it, Marv. It's almost melted. Okay, good enough. I don't know if you realize it or not, but then this is, works like a, a heat uh, shrink, shrink, heat shrink, or whatever you call it. And it shrinks right down on the, yep, shrinks right on there, nice and tight. Now let's see if we can put a piece over the whole works. What do we need here? Would this be big enough or is that too big? That's pretty darn close. Let's light it down there. Ooh, ooh. Let that cool a little, Marv. Maybe I ought to just let it alone for a bit. Still plenty hot, but I want to get this 
See what I just did there now? I, nope. Right there. We'll call that good. Now let's heat that one up a little. To say that looks pretty good but I want to put let's see if I got bigger piece in here I want to put some more on each end if I can yeah this might work it's a little big but boy I'll tell you what I need it a little big to go all the way down We'll go just like that right there. That'll be perfect. Now let's get that. I don't want to burn myself, but I need to squeeze these wires together just a, a bit. Oh yeah. I like that. That'll be perfect. I'll shut that off again and grab another one of those. And we're gonna slide it. We're gonna slide it. I guess I should have tested it before I did all this. Oh well, we're just gonna assume that testing isn't necessary. Okay, there we go. Now, let's try that again. Now hold this up away from the wood. Start in the center. I usually start in the center and work out. That way it heats out right to the edge of the cord. That looks good. I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way to do this, but this is the way that I do it. Okay, I should have put some dielectric grease on that too. I didn't even think about it. Okay, that's good enough. We're done with that. Now the next step in this cord proposition is putting an end on here. And that shouldn't be too difficult. So I have one somewhere right here that I cut off of something. We'll grab a knife, a couple screwdrivers, and we will come over here and take this apart. That's this right here. We're going to take it apart. I'm going to pull this little insulator off. You know, this is a really old, uh, it's a, a two-prong plug. You can still buy them new, but they're not in every hardware store, but they're in mine. I don't know how long though. We don't sell a lot of it anymore. And then all I got to do is loosen these two screws here. Get you up here just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay, we're going to take this screw loose. I'm not planning on bringing it completely out. There it stopped on me. Okay, this one. And where this came from is I have an old jointer, an old Sears and Roebuck jointer sitting over there that I plan to clean up, get all the parts moving again, and it needs some wiring. Oh boy, I don't know if I'm gonna get that off. Hope so. Let's try this one with a little bit bigger screwdriver. That turns. Maybe we can get it with just loosening one side. I doubt it, but we'll look. I 
I don't want to buy a new one. If I don't... Ah, yeah, there she turned. Yep, it turned. Just loosen that up. Get these spread just a little bit. To loosen the cord in there and should be able to pull that right out of there. And I am. And if I look at that, I can make the other end of the cord look just the same way. So we'll go right there. We'll pull that like that and we'll trim back to right there according to that. And I don't know why that wouldn't work because it worked on the other one. Okay, boy, that it's a little hard to cut. And I don't want to cut through it. Okay. I guess it's harder to cut because it's rubber and not just that hard plastic. It's got a mind of its own, doesn't it? It's coming. That isn't going to come off very easy, but I have this scissors. I've been bragging about my scissors for a long time. Cuts really well. Let's see if it cuts that stuff. I don't know if it will or not. Well, it's trying to. It is definitely trying to. Let me grab a hold of it so it doesn't move on me. Okay, that came off. Let's see if I can't clean it up just a little. Okay. Now I still have a few threads here I want to get off. Maybe my other scissors would work for that then, you know, my regular. Come on. There we go. Okay. So this will feed right in here. We'll get it fed right in. And we'll strip the wires back. And you're doing projects like this one right here, for instance, it's always a good idea to have the correct tools. You can get by with a utility knife, the strip wire, and I did that that way for many years, but boy, that can be frustrating. Okay, now what we're going to do is pull that down and enough that I can take this wire and spin it around that bolt or that little bolt in there you can see it I'm gonna push the wire in as far as I can go and then we're gonna turn that tight and that should be adequate uh, you heard me say should be. I hope you pay careful attention when I use words like that because technically it should be okay, but we'll see. As soon as I get this other one on, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go at it. And we're going to plug this motor in again and just make sure yesterday or the last time I ran it wasn't a fluke. You saw it run. Well, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. This is part two 
of a video of revamping. I hate to use the term restoring because I'm not really restoring it, but I am kind of. I'm restoring it to a useful condition. I'm not restoring it to new condition. Um, so, depending on how you want to define restoration, if restoration is defined by making something look brand new, then go for it. But in the restoration work that I did all those years, restoration didn't mean that at all. What it meant was getting something functional without losing the, uh, the age and taking this and make everything look like brand new in restoration the type I did well frankly that's a mistake but uh, like that old Bronco out there I don't know if you can see it or not I'll shine this up it's out there in that bright sun so you probably can't see it but it's sitting out there. I, I cleaned it up, I fixed all the rust, and I mean there was a lot of it. When I say fix, I mean I fix it the way it should be fixed. I cut it all out, I welded it new back in, um, had to replace a complete beam in the back, which was a little tricky but I got it as you can see now that's tight that's on but I did make that thing look like a showroom perfect vehicle and I know a lot of people in cars today want that and you know I'm I want that too but not for that one and I did repaint it I did all that and the way it turned out, I'm very happy. Now what we're going to do here is I'm going to go get a cord and we're going to plug this in again. And I also think I'm going to get some kind of a wire ring right here. Let me show you. I think I'm going to put something... Well, that's not what I wanted. Okay, you see this right here. These two wires, I think I'm going to go at it and put something around that to keep them from spreading. Like maybe a little piece of wire or something. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud now. I have the cord here I was using the sander on. Let me grab it. Oh! The old bend over back. Is not getting any better, is it? Okay, this should this should be long enough. Now here we go, guys. Let's get this pulley over here. As you can see it. Can you see that? Let me get this out of the way. Okay, here's the cord, and here we go. There's that motor, and I can touch it now, don't have to worry about it. That thing will sit right here. Oh boy, that, and it will run till your heart's content. I probably should have put a switch on it, but Quite honestly, I didn't even think about it till right now. Didn't have one before, and I guess it won't have one now. So the next step would be to get the hardware and bolt all this stuff together and get this pulley set where we want it. We'll go from there. So that's going to have to wait because I don't have the hardware. It's almost five o'clock and they're going to be closed here so that's going to have to wait for the next for the next day so it'll be a while for me short for you hey by the way thank you for watching 
at least as far. I'm back here in my shop working on this, this motor. The motor runs, got oil in it, got this pillow block, we're going to mount it, get the belt on, and we're going to test it. But before I do that, I want to share with you why I'm putting so much time into this old grinder. And to a lot of you, it looks like a piece of junk. And it, it is, honestly. Has no practical use in today's world, but in its day, when this was put together, it did. What is the history of this? I started dating my wife when I was 16 years old. We've been married this year for 51 years. We got married young, had three boys. First one came three years after marriage, second one a couple years after that, and the third one a few years after that. I have grandkids. But what does all that have to do with this? Well, when I was dating my wife, I started working for my father-in-law on the farm, and part of that work required that I shape, bend, make things, grind, sharpen chisels. And one day I needed to sharpen a chisel, so I went back into one of his old sheds. It was a tool shop that used to be an old hog shed. We well, didn't have a lot to work with back then. Things were tough. Farming was different. It was a family farm. But back in the corner I found this old grinder set up. It didn't work then. Cord frayed, plug bad, Motor needed attention, the belt wasn't too good, but I needed to sharpen a couple of coal ch chisels, so I dug this old grinder up and I tweaked it a little bit. I tightened the motor up with belts, that's why there's two holes here. And in the process of that, I recall now how this back here got broken and I shared with you in my first video how I um, discovered the broken part of the housing on this old electric motor. Well I remember now how that happened. I dropped that motor and I broke two, le two legs or the bottom part of this motor. I broke. Oh my, now what was I going to do? Well there was an Amish blacksmith shop that we dealt, dealt with and I took it there and they welded those legs back on for me and I brought it back to the farm and I bolted it up, put it all back together and I used this. I couldn't have been over 16, 17, 18 years old at the time. And after I married my wife, I worked for that man for four years right out of high school. I enjoyed those years, and I really think back on them. And a few years ago, after my mother-in-law and my father-in-law passed away, they sold their estate, and they drug this out, part of the auction, and I looked at that, and I thought... That has some history with me. I remember using it. So I bought it at the auction and it sat in storage for years and I thought I'd always drag it out and see if I couldn't get the old girl working again. And that's what I'm doing. I want to get this running and operating and I want to sharpen a chisel or two on this stone once I get that done. And I'm bringing you along and that's simply the only reason why I'm doing this is so that I can see this work again. I can remember the days when I first used it. 
And it's almost unbelievable for me to stand here and share this with you this morning. Uh, I, I don't know. I just don't know what to say. It almost makes me uh, get emotional thinking about it. But that's how fast time goes. And that's how... I mean, this motor... I'm going to pass away and this motor is still going to be running. This motor was running when I was a young kid and it was running when my father-in-law used it and his dad used it. And who knows when. I don't know where this motor came from, but it wasn't originally set up like this. It probably came off of some kind of, I don't know, appliance or something. I have no idea. But they took this motor, rigged it up on here, and they used it on their farm long before I was even born. So why wouldn't I take the time to bring this stuff back to life, even if I have to use some new parts to do so? And that's the reason why I'm fixing it. There's a little bit of a sentimental value here, and I just want to pass it on to someone else who may appreciate it. I have no idea where this old bench came from. I never thought to ask my father-in-law when he was living, but I'm sure there's a history behind it. So let's dig right into it, and let's get this finished. And before the end of this day, you're going to see me grinding and sharpening some cold chisels on this like I did over 50 years ago. I hope you follow to the end to see the spectacular results that this will bring even at in and at its own age. So follow along to the end. And I'm going to say this now. If you have any comments along the way, drop them down there. I appreciate it. And if anything I bring to you is something that you find interesting, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. It's not all about fixing, it's about different things. I fix things in here. I love to take nature shots. When I say nature, I found a turtle the other day along the road. It needed help to survive. It wasn't a snapper either. It was a painted turtle and it was big. Never seen one. That. I saved it and rescued it, and I have that in one of the shorts that I put out. Those kind of videos, I know that it doesn't go along with fixing, but that's just the way it is. You're going to get that along with this and a few personal stories along the way. I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe. It, it's an encouragement to me to see the, the views go up and the subscriptions go up. So let's dig right into this and we'll get her done. Okay, let's get right into it here. The first thing I'm going to do is mount this right there. So what I need is a drill. I have one here set up. And I've marked this with lines by aligning this motor and where it was before. So what I'm going to do is drill two holes. That just made it through. Now, <clears throat> to ensure that that's in the right place, I'm going to go ahead and, and pound that in. No, I'm not, because that bit is just a hair small, and it won't go in. Okay, let me go get a little bit bigger bit. Okay. Let's put that in right there. Okay. Now, let's drop this in. Perfect. And that would go there, that would go there. Looks like my marks are correct, so we're going to go ahead and run this one in. Now 
As you can see, that's drilling very nicely. And now I believe we can do this one. Get this in place. Oh, that's that's feeling really good down there. Right there. Right there. And I've got washers that I'm going to put on the underneath side. And so that I'm not right up against that wood. Let's clean that up a little bit. Yeah, I've got some burrs under here. But you get the process. I picked up lock nuts so they don't come loose. We'll just get everything started like we do. And then we can put it... I don't know why I picked up four of these. I only needed three. I actually got five of them here. Why did I got five? Well, that's interesting. I huh. wonder if I... I know they didn't pay for that many. I'll have to take them back. Okay. Do we got it or not? Let's put one more on. Where's the nut? Right here. Wonder if I got two extras for that other piece that I'm going to use screws for. I bet that's what it's about. Okay, those are in place. I'm going to actually get me. A, a wrench and tighten that all up. Walk over here to my open ends and I believe it's a 7 16th and my assumption is correct. I'll grab a 3 8 and 7 16th. We'll just go and this one should work. Grab the little driver and show you what I have here as you can see I have this it's an adapter it'll fit right in here and I have an open end wrench I'll put on top here and I'll go from underneath and tie oh wait a minute wait a minute Yeah, there we go. Why is that turning like that? Huh, that seems strange. That one's smaller. I wonder what the heck? No wonder that didn't fit correctly. Wonder what those two were for. I'm not sure what that's about, but must have been in the wrong bin when I went in there. Oh wow, that's nice. I tightened up not beautiful. When I did this as a kid on the farm. I just picked up and made do with whatever I had. I'll show you. I didn't have the right, the right size bolt. That's all I had could find. So I filled it up with these nuts and stuff and I put it on there. And you know, I can remember doing that. But back then, I just used what I had and could find to get the job done. And 
didn't think anything about it. But, uh, it's interesting. So we have this. Now this would be the next thing that I need to install along with getting the belt ready. Now, just so you know, I went ahead and bought a skinnier belt, and the reason I did that is this is the wrong size belt for this pulley. But the half inch belt I had was just too thick and hard to get tightened up. I thought it would be. I needed a belt that had notches in it. That way those notches would allow me to tighten it up. But this belt will work just fine for what I'm going to use it for. It will ride in there tight and I'll be able to snug it up a little bit better. And it'll still work, but it is not the correct belt. I know it isn't, and now you know it isn't. So let's, first of all, let me go find the Allen wrench. This time I won't break it, I promise. Let me get this on for you. And, oh, let's see, we're going to go like this. Now I'm going to put this on first to just make it easier. I'm going to do this, put this in, get it run through, and aligned here just like that. And we'll move that over to this more of the center oh boy i can't see it i'm just gonna snug this up so it doesn't move on me i want it about in the center oh, that's close enough okay let's see that's pretty tight there i'm gonna move it over just a little bit so let's loosen it some right there now let's tighten it so when that gets it clears all the way around now the next thing i want to do is put this motor here and we're going to put the belt on it i'm going to pull it to where i think it needs to go I think right in there is going to be close, but let me take a look at it. I'm going to turn that just a little. I'm doing this all by eye. F-I-Y. I'm going to get this one in first. So I'm going to mark that. Mm, with my marker. Okay, I better mark right there. I don't know if this is going to work. But we're going to see if... Oops! Drop something. I'm going to put a hole right there. That hole has to be a little bit bigger. This is a 3 8 inch bolt. I'm going to run it up from the bottom. Uh-oh. Might be a hair long. Now we'll see. Let me get a 3 8 inch bit. Yeah, this would be the second time around for me on this one. But I didn't have as good of tools back then. Well, I'm sure I didn't. Tools like this weren't even thought of when I was doing this the first time, battery tool like that, man, I'd have thought I died and went to heaven with something that nice. Okay, let's see if this will clear. It clears, barely. As long as I can get that nut started on these, should be all right. Now let me get this belt on. There's that's in place, and what I'll do is swing this over as tight as I can. 
that's gonna work just fine for the mark here drill that hole Got that hole drilled. Okay, let's brush this off, get some of the dust off of there. And let's pull this so we can get that bolt in, hopefully. That's oh. I see. Just off just a little bit. Let me ring the hole out. That way we got a little extra. Let's see if we can't get that to go in. Oh, it's so close. I wonder. Oh! There she goes. There she started. Let me be right back. Palm of my hand hurts hitting on that, so let's tap that up. It's not coming up very good. I'll ream it out, but I want to test this to see how it is going to run. So I'll get an extension cord over here. And we will plug that motor in and just see how that pulley is going to react to it. And I still got a little ways to go, but this will work. Uh, I might have it, until I get that pulled down, that might be too tight. And if it is, we'll adjust it. Wow. Looks like that's going to work good, guys. Okay, but I really think that's going to be too tight. See the back end of the motor, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'll show you here, is up a little bit. And if I pull that down tight, I'll tell you what, it's going to be close. Let's leave it and see what happens. I don't want to put too much pressure on these welds though and break them again. I may use that as a tightening mechanism and the way what I mean is I could put washers under here and bolt it down tight to the washers which means I wouldn't have to pull it quite as tight and yeah I think that would work actually. But for right now let's get this uh, Bolt here, pop back out of here. I gotta make that so it goes in just a little easier. That's a little tight. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna go at it and get me what I've always called a spade bit. And what this bit does is it's a for wood, intended for wood. And I'm gonna, it'll give me a bigger hole without a whole lot of effort. And you can. Wow. Fudge. Battery's dead. Okay. Now that gave me quite a bit of leeway in that hole, but what that does is it allows me to actually pound this up in a way that, see that's going to be perfect. That'll be perfect. We'll drill these holes here. How do I want to do that? Tell you what I'm gonna do is 
I need to mark them somehow. I'll get me a punch. Typically you wouldn't use a carpenter's hammer with a, a steel punch. You'd use a uh, ball peen hammer which is a little softer on the head. A lot less chance of hurting yourself or others. Because a carpenter's hammer is, a, is actually harder head and you can hurt yourself if you pound too, too aggressively on steel. So, but I got a plan here and we're going to get this worked out in a way that I think you're going to appreciate. Get this bolt back out of there. And what I'm going to do is ream this hole out also with the bigger bit and that gives me a little bit more leeway on adjusting the motor. Now I punched this wood right here it did. Bits a little dull. And I think right here. Back in the day when they uh, cut wood like this, it would have come right out of their wood, local in the farm. And it made these legs and this top out of their own sawmill lumber. Maybe cut a tree down, take it to the local sawmill that uh, was, hey, that's no good. Sawhorse is trying to fall over on me. That could cause an issue. Let's get that set up. And we don't have that issue. Boy, wouldn't that be something? All that come toppling down. I guess that's not that great a setup. I thought it was, but it isn't. It'll work good enough. Okay, let's get that sawdust out of there. Put this back in place. And get these bolts in for good. Okay, right there. Okay, that's got to go back further. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. There we go. Got the first one in. Get it started. Second one. That's a lot easier. I'm fighting myself at hardly any now. And look at that. It isn't up in the air like it was before. So maybe that's a better deal the way I've got it set up. See how these holes line. If they even do. Oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> I don't know that I can have it any better than that. Although that bolt is just a shade too short. And see, I can pull that some when I go to tighten it up. We'll put the last one in. Hopefully it will find its mark. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's not going to. I'm off. Unless that's not the, yeah, that's the right hole. Oh, shoot. Let me get this loose again. I must have grabbed the wrong 
Hey, wait a minute. That's not that far off. Not like I thought it was. There we go. Now let's try this one. Perfect. Uh, that's more like it. That is more like it. Let's see if I can get... Just need to get enough thread down here to get this started. Oh, come on. Hey, I got a little bit started. Now let's get... Oh. Now, right here it is. I thought I was missing a nut. I'm going to go get a wrench, though, first. And let me take a look at my belt. Another reason for using that smaller belt is I can be off in alignment a little bit and it's not going to jump. But sighting it here, I got to say that looks pretty darn close. We're not doing any more work than I did to, to get it to line up. So let's get this here. That's on. Ooh. Uh-oh. Don't like the sound of that. Don't want to break that foot. So I'm not going to give that anymore. Let's see if I can get this one a little tighter. I don't want to break it. That might be how I broke it to begin with. I don't know. Thought I might have dropped it. But... Okay, that's on there nice. And that belt is as tight as you would want a V belt. It's not, it's not too tight though. It's just about right. Now I'm missing uh, my washer on the bottom of this one. Without that washer, I just pull that bolt right up through the wood, <coughs> which on this back one, that's going to be the way that I do it, and I'll tell you why. The bolt's just a hair short, so I want to pull that up through the wood just a little. Okay, let's take this one back off. Okay, and it came out. We'll take the washer off, and I told you why. That gives me a little bit more. I only had about half of the nut on the bolt, and I want to come through just a little bit because these are locking nuts, nylon locking, and without them hitting the nylon, it doesn't lock very good. Okay. That isn't going to go any further, so I'll finish it from up here since it's sunk into the wood a little bit. And keep coming, keep coming. I just want that to come through just ever so right there. That's all I need. Let's try the power again. And see if I got it too tight. Nope. Um, it's actually pretty darn good, but before we run that anymore, I want to put a little oil in each of these caps. Oh yeah, that made a big difference. Now let's try it again. <laughs> Now as that's running, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here and see that belt's finding its own center and the way it looks is this pulley needs to be moved about an eighth of an inch that direction. And see, this is moved in just a little bit 
but let's see what happens if I push it. I can't push. Yep, look, it goes over. I think that'll be just that that's that's good enough. So let's unplug it. I can see right now it definitely would have been better to have a switch on there. These parts right here, one went there, and then the stone went on, and then this went on, and then the nut. You can see the nut. Now I gotta remember left hand threads. It goes on the opposite of what I thought. Well, let's try this one. Maybe I boogered up the end of them threads and that's what it is. You know, I told you you don't want to bump on them because you booger the threads up and then the nuts don't go on right. And there's a good chance I did that. Nope, I didn't. There it went. Let's move that over just now it'll it'll bring itself over crescent wrench for that that almost brought it to centering it up okay now i need a wire wheel for this side boy that's just a hair too tight perfect okay i'm going to put the old wire wheel back on it if i can find it thing has seen better days that's for sure and see that needs to be spaced otherwise that's just not going to work very good oh what could i use what i'm going to do is just put enough washers on this side to space it out so that I can tighten it up with this other nut. I don't see, I don't see my, um, honestly I don't see the, uh, a brush that I can put in here, but you gotta have both sides on to make one side work properly. Otherwise, this shaft is going to move back and forth like that. And so this will work. I just don't want it on too tight. Let's see. That looks like that would work. Uh, shop rag. Some of this oil has leaked out. And that's what it's supposed to do. That's why this board here was so oil saturated. Okay, now the last thing I have is this part right here, mounted on here as a makeshift guide for to, to rest your tool up on. And I do have, I don't know if these are going to work or not. I will get a, I want to pre-drill these holes just big enough to a couple of reasons for that is it'll help the uh, the screw or the yeah the screw I've got a machine screw going easier want to just make sure these holes don't have rust that broken off particles from the other screws that I took off <clears throat> and you know they're going to because those screws broke and I, I I mean they twisted off when I took it apart and I'm pretty sure that uh, residual screw yep that's hard that's hard so what am I gonna do here I wonder I can yes I can I'm gonna move that I'm going to move that just a little bit and 
from away from those uh, existing holes. So we'll put it right there. Oh, come on. It's not tight enough. We'll do it right there. Okay. I think we're going to pull that back just a hair and we're going to go right here. That should work. Now, I need to get this set back up with my bit. And hopefully, I can run those screws in. Yeah, there's one. Put that in here just like this. But I need a number three bit, and I have a number two in here. See, there's different size bits. This is a number two, a number three is just a hair bigger. Now what I'm going to do is, since I was in that drawer, I put an extension on here so I can get to it easier. And maybe, ah, right there. Oh, ho! Oh. how does that look? Oh man, if that looked any better, I wouldn't know how to act. Now this screw right here, like the other one that was in there, is going to come out the bottom. And what that means is that I'm going to grab a hold of it someday and get my fingers on the end of that screw and quite frankly that's not going to feel very good so let me don't need this extension for this one though that's for sure let me see if how far that's actually going to stick out and I may have to get a smaller screw or I may take this over to my grinder and grind it off uh, that's out at least a half inch. So how am I wanting to get that off of there? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it back out of there. Boy, that's fit nice though. And I'm going to take it over to my grinder. And I'm just going to grind that down. So bear with me just a few minutes. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm going to confess here, I got lazy. I just went and got another short screw. That's perfect. I still got that old one sticking out here. That I'm going to have to do something with. Because that little thing is going to hurt. I didn't notice it until I really started looking here. And there it is. That's sharp, that would have hurt. Now let's see how stable this is. This is crooked a little bit, but the way you fix that is once you're set up like this, you can take a, a wrench like that, put it on there, and we're just gonna adjust that a little bit up. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, that's that's actually pretty good. I have a thing back together. Now there's only one thing to do. Put it in the corner and forget about it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to test it out. I'm going to set this down on the floor. I'm going to bring you along. And I'm going to show you how this is going to work.
Well, you've just witnessed me sharpening a couple of chisels. Can this old grinder be fixed? Well, you saw it here, and absolutely it can be fixed. Can you fix it? You're darn right you can fix it. Hope you followed to the end. If you have any comments, I would love to hear from you.